time, Joan Cartan Hansen. Thank you for joining us on this Dialogue Web Extra. We're continuing our conversation about the future of journalism with Jan Schaefer, Executive Director of JLab. I, I, you, have, you have the book Rules of the Road that you right. can find on the website, or you can buy the book, or you can download, like I did, the PDF. And, uh, and there are some ethical takeaways you have in the book, and I want to talk to you a couple about them. One of them is the anonymous posting response, because we have, we have papers in Idaho that you can, as an anonymous, just post a comment on the, and there's no name attached, and then others that require that name. Right. How do you feel about that? Well, what we hear from people is that if, if it's totally anonymous, the civil discourse kind of goes in the gutter, and it's not very pleasant. And it, it actually, I think, turns off your community to looking at your website and really participating in a healthy way. Um, so I think some degree of either moderation or identification really helps with ensuring that the, the kind of environment you're presenting to your community is one in which they might want to participate in discussing issues. So that can happen by either registering, having a valid email, requiring use of full names, or just, you know, um, pre-reviewing all comments before they're posted, which takes a little labor and manpower to do. It does take a little bit of time. You have to yeah. keep track of that. That's something we do on our site. You're, right. not, you're not allowed to just, just drop a bomb drop and walk, on, wrong, and walk right. away. You have to, you have to right. check it. But it, it is an interesting debate because some of those, some of those comments are just cruel. They're There's cruel. Just, and they're not they're helpful. Mean. And they're, yeah. They often yeah, unfairly target different groups or people, and yeah. it's awful. But the papers who do it say, well, we don't want to be the ones in the middle of the conversation. We want the conversation to be just so that they, they backed off. Well, I don't think that, I personally don't think that's responsible. I mean, I think you need to guide the conversation. Um, I often say that news organizations like to be a watchdog, but you should be a guide dog too. And you really need to help the conversation in the community go well, because community life won't go well if the conversation doesn't go well. One of the other uh, comments and questions we had uh, as a Facebook question was on uh, about Twitter that said, news events can unravel themselves in real time on sites like Twitter, but with any breaking story, it's easy to make mistakes. What do you tell editors and reporters for these digital news services about the ethics of covering breaking news? You know, I, this is where transparency comes in, and I think a lot of these sites are learning to say, look, you know, we heard there's an accident at wherever, 3rd and Main, and, and uh, what do you know about it? Um, this is what we've been told. We're trying to confirm it. I mean, you really end up reaching out to your audience sometimes for information. On a more national story, you just have to let people know, you know, that it's an incremental breaking news story, and here's what we know now. It's unconfirmed, or, you know. Have, are, have we, as a, as a viewing audience, become more accepting of the hazards that come with a breaking news story? Because it used to, you know, a, new, a breaking story would break, and then I'd get the information, I'd go off, and then I'd research it, I'd confirm it, and then I would take my story and put it on the newscast right. that night. So right, there's right. time. there was time to get the details. You don't have that anymore. It's on there's your Twitter no feed, anymore. it's gone just like that. Right. It's and no mistakes can be really serious. Mistakes are serious. I mean, a lot of people have been declared dead or are still living. And, um, uh, <laughs> Better that than the other way around. Right, <laughs> right. Um, and I think the public is getting a little savvier about it. Um, I'm sure they get impatient with it sometimes, um, but I don't think it's going to change. And um, I think it's this where a, a certain element of media literacy comes in as the public learns who to trust and what was an honest mistake and, you know, how fast you can correct it when, once you figure out what's accurate. The other question we had come online was about social media. What advice do you have for an online service that's already on the web, how do they use social media? Well, we have an excellent uh, learning module on social media in which um, the founder of Oakland Local out in um, Oakland, California, really tr launched her site with a social media campaign in which she got all of her friends at a certain point in time to tweet and, and put on their Facebook comments about the site. And it was really very orchestrated. And, and she got that site up and running with more um, attention and momentum than anything I've seen. So it's very powerful as an, as an outreach tool to let people know quickly um, what's going on. It's also a very powerful tool to listen to the community and understand what stories you may need to be focusing on because that's what people are talking about or that's what's trending, as they say, on social media. So it's, um, you got to use it nowadays. Well, it's definitely changed the way news is collected. There was a, a, a story of a, someone who posted a comment on a blog, 
someone in New York City saw the comment, took the words off the sign, put it on the, put it on their sign. The sign was taken by a picture for another blog in New York. Then that got enough publicity that it made the national news. Right. So the the story existed entirely in cyberspace until some one person put it on a sign, a cardboard sign, and put it up. I know. It's, the, the ability to go viral is, is astonishing. And, um, you know, you got to be aware of that, too. But you got to cover it as a reporter. I mean, you have to, you have to know when that's happening. So it's, it's a lot to ask. And as we wrap up this, this Web Extra, what advice do you have? For, we'll take both sides. For, the, for someone who's starting a website and they're worried about the ethical lines, what advice do you have? And then we'll flip the other side, what you want for viewers or readers, to, what they should know. Um, I think for a startup, you just follow your gut. You know when it feels good or when it feels bad or whether you want to confront someone in a store and you, you can have a good explanation for a decision that you made. Um, you can stand by that decision. I think consistency is important as well. Um, you, you know, decide you're not going to report anything less than a felony, then you need to stick with that. Um, I think, um, you know, your gut tells you a lot. And if you're the, if you're someone who's hunting around and reading it, what advice do you have for them? I think, you know, actually I'd offer some of the same advice that um, your gut will also tell you whether something's ringing true to you or whether that's something's just silly and it doesn't sound right. And, and you know, if that happens too much on a site, go to another site. I mean, I think you really don't need to waste your time on something that, you know, you, you want information. People share information as part of community, and a lot of news, I think the recent Pew study came out saying a lot of news is shared by word of mouth. So, you know, if you want to be talking about it to your friends, you want to be sure you have good information. And that hasn't changed. No. That's still the same. Yeah. <laughs> Jan, thank you for being here. I appreciate you, you taking time to join us. Happy to. And thank you for joining us for this Dialogue Web Extra.